Signed, sealed, and delivered. Big, big. This is a big one, all right? I was gonna go even louder there, but it's not necessary because I think maybe we should control ourselves, control our excitement here. I know we just beat one of the big boys once more. We beat United in a thrilling fashion. Today against C, well, yesterday actually now at this point, against C, was not as balls to the wall as against United, but it was a more measured performance and in some ways an even more professional one. So. Top of the table, boys. First time in a very long time. And we're going to dig into it right now. Hey, no Ridge on the comic here. Right now, we're just going to be going over, digging into, as I said, the Spurs versus City game. A big one. The biggest game of the season, in my opinion, so far for the team. And they came through. They passed with flying colours. And I feel everyone on the team sheet got at least a 7 out of 10. Maybe even like a 7.5. Everyone pulled their weight in this game and showed us what we should be doing on a weekly basis when we play the big boys. I don't think this type of pragmatic play can work when you're playing against Burnley, when you're playing against Sheffield United, when you're playing against Brighton. It's not gonna work. But when you're playing against a Chelsea, an Arsenal, a City, a Liverpool, this is maybe how you need to play. And I feel a lot of teams are gonna look at this result and the way Spurs played and say, this is how you do it. So overall, for me, it was the best team performance by a country mile of the whole season. Against United, we played very well. Against Newcastle, we played well in a different way, but we didn't end up getting the result. Against West Ham, we played well for 55, 60 minutes, but didn't get the result. Here, we played in a different style. It was this in-between style of the way we played against Brighton and United, while also adding a mid-block, essentially, through the entire game. We were so defensively solid. City just kept on pounding and pounding and pounding. But we kept on saying, no, no, you're not allowed into the club. The bouncers were there and saying, you're not coming in today. Not today, boys. You don't have your ID. That's what was happening on the pitch, I feel, when they were outside the box, trying to get in, trying to penetrate, if you know what I'm saying, and get inside that box, inside the D. Not, well, you know, you know what I'm saying. But Hugo Lloris played pretty well. Didn't have that much to do i guess but when he did have the big saves to make he made every single one of them i think the back four played really really well for me while harry kane was the man of the match aurier came very very close i think he should be praised when he does a good job and today again for maybe the third or fourth time this season he had an incredible game he was so concise in what he was doing he knew what he needed to do he was going forward when he needed to but his defensive display was shockingly good for Serge Aurier. So good job to the big man. Regulon, Regaton, the Samba man on the side on the left also had a very good game. I think those two really complement each other very well, knowing when one to go up and when the other one to go up, sometimes bombing forward both at the same time. But they seem to have a pretty good thing going on between the two of them. Dyer and Toby are definitely, though, the back line that we need in the middle there. I think those two clearly are the defensive solidity that we need in the centre-back positions. But with Toby now potentially injured for, we don't exactly know. It might be three weeks, it might be four, it might be more. Not a good thing. It's a good thing that we did bring in Joe Rondon, I believe his name is. The Welsh, I was going to say the Welsh wizard, but we know the Welsh wizard is indeed uh, Gareth, Senior Bale. Get it there? Because the, the Spanish connection, you know? Maybe he's like the, the Welsh whiz kid. We'll call him that. The Welsh whiz kid over there, Joe Rondon. It was a good thing we did buy him because Sanchez does seem to be out of favour. Even though I still think he is a good centre-back, I think he is prone to mistakes. At the same time, though, there are trade-offs, right? Sanchez is most definitely the quickest centre-back we have. And in some games, that will be completely invaluable against the pace going forward from the opposition. The Irish jig, Matt Doherty, was indeed out with apparently coronavirus right now. But I do think his introduction into the squad has forced Serge to be a better player and play better defensively. So if this is what was necessary to kick this guy on, then I'm all for it because he looks like a completely different player. Just like another lad who's playing right now in incredible form, Ndombele Tangi over here, playing through the passes that no one else thinks are gonna happen, playing over the top. I do think that 
not just from him, but as the game went on into the latter stages of the first half and the beginnings of the second half, I feel they kept on trying to play the same ball over the top. And it's something they should stop trying to do so much. If it works, it works. But don't overplay the ball when it's not necessary because it will become a crutch. And I feel they'll just keep on trying to go for the ball even when it's not there to be to be played. So I think overall, Ndombele had a really good game again. Played for about 65. And then he comes off the pitch. Gio struts on. 30 seconds later, bangs in a goal. Kane gets the assist on that one. And I swear, I'm not going to be like Jose Eugenius, but... Jose, something was working there. All the stars aligned in that moment for Gio to come on and sign and seal and deliver, as I said at the start there, the match and the three points for Spurs. So Gio came on, did his bit. So Gio, good. And Dombele, good. His French compatriot over here, Musa Sissoko, again. I do think this midfield is the best thing going for us right now. I would not change it. I know Gio scored the goal. He came on and played well. But with Sissoko and Hjorberg playing in such a class way right now and with Ndombele in that number 10 but slightly deeper role I would not change it at the moment everything's going well we're winning games we're grinding other ones out so for me I would not touch it I know Toby's gonna have to be changed out for either Rondon or Sanchez maybe Tanganga can come back when he's fully fit and I think he might be probably first choice in that case in that position potentially then we get to the front three. Bergwijn today, I think, had his most all-round game of the season. I think he played well defensively. I think he played well offensively as well. Some people would say he didn't do much. He was making space for all the other players around him. That's what Kane does really well, and we praise him for that. And I think Bergwijn did the same thing. He had a big chance in the second half, I think, and he should have really put it away. Uh, but... You know, you can't always bury bury the hard ones. You can't always bury the easy ones either. And while we didn't have a lot of chances and City had a ton, our chances were big chances. We had four very big chances through the game and put two of them away. And that led us to win. But they were four very big, big chances. Whereas City had one or two. And I think it was really because of how we played defensively. Just not allowing them to break us down through the lines. They were getting caught offside a little bit. Not often, but it did happen. And now we get to Son and Kane. Again, the team that just keeps on going. This time it wasn't Kane assisting Son, Son assisting Kane. But they were both involved. Son got the first goal in the first five minutes. He seems to be on a bit of a scoring burst against Man City right now and in the league in general. He was indeed the highest scorer in the Premier League until Calvert-Lewin scored his two goals today. But still... Nine goals in nine games, not bad. Kane, seven goals in nine games, but with nine assists now. Nine assists for Kane this season. This could be an incredible one, boys. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it has been so far. We got some big games coming up. We got City, we got Arsenal, I think. We got Leicester, we got Liverpool. A lot of shenanigans is going to go on, and I do feel that the next five weeks, four or five weeks, is potentially going to decide where we end up. It's going to be... Pretty difficult to decipher where the table's going to be because it just is so tight at the top and tight at the bottom. You know, two bad results and we could be in, in ninth place. So it's very, very weird. And I think this is just kind of the story of the season and it's going to be that way. But we are indeed top of the table. First time in over half a decade. And I remember the day very, very long time ago now. Hopefully this can run on. But we are top by, well, goal difference. Liverpool won. So it is indeed just goal difference setting us in charge. But I see. I see a bright future ahead this season. It might be a rough world, but I see a bright future. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Set the channel down there if you didn't. If you didn't, then Jose Mourinho himself will come after you. You don't want that. No, you really don't. So just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been Narendra the Comic. You've been great. I'll see you next time. That's tomorrow. If you don't know, make a video every single day. You've been doing it every day for over two years now. We ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Pop back again tomorrow for some more quality shitty content because we're hashtag never not here if you don't know we also bring the bakwas every single day and bakwas means nonsense in punjabi and we the kings of that shit we're the kings see you tomorrow skadoosh <laughs>